The New York Giants snap a three-game losing streak with a gritty 31-19 win over the Washington Commanders. We'll have some takeaways and more thoughts about how the Giants season is progressing coming your way next on the Locked on Giants podcast. You are Locked on Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode of the Locked on Giants podcast is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to another edition of the Locked on Giants podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast family, your team every day. I'm Patricia Training, your host, P Train. And ladies and gentlemen, yay, we finally have a win to talk about. We have a win to talk about. The three-game losing streak is over. The New York Giants beating the Washington Commanders 31-19. to And on today's show, I've got some takeaways from the game itself, some general observations, and then I want to talk about the future because, believe it or not, as happy as occasion this is, and I know that's stretching it considering how the season is, but listen, we'll take a win however we get a win. I did have some people in my timeline on social media lamenting the win. So I've got some thoughts about that. So anyway, as always, thank you so much for making us your first listener today. Or if you watch on YouTube, your first watch of the day, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that bell if you're watching on YouTube. If you listen on our audio platforms, please give us a five-star review if you wouldn't mind. That would be greatly appreciated. And uh, shout out, by the way, to all my everydayers, newcomers and everybody in between. Let's talk about a win because it's been so long. So hopefully I remember how to do this now. (laughs) All right. So Giants 31-19. Tommy DeVito getting his second NFL start here. Uh, The New York Giants getting their first offensive touchdown in the first quarter, snapping obviously a 10-game streak. The Giants, the last team to score in the first quarter on offense in the NFL. So the Giants, basically, they took control of this game right from the get-go. It was all Giants. I don't think the lead ever shifted to the favor of of, uh, the commanders. And you know what? Good on the Giants. 31 points matching their season high that they scored back in week two in a win over the Arizona Cardinals. So let's talk about some of the occurrences in this game, because there were some wild things here. Number one, the thing that jumps out at me the most is the Giants didn't have any rushing yardage until I think it was the last play in the third quarter. That's just absolutely wild. All right. If you had told me that that would be a stat, I'd say no way. But in the the play of the last quarter, I think Saquon Barkley, that's when he ripped off a 36-yard run. Um, The Giants did finish with 91 rushing yards on 19 carries, no touchdowns, as the running game just wasn't very good uh, for the Giants. But that's okay. Now, the passing game, let's talk about that. The passing game, Tommy DeVito was um, 18 for 26, 246 yards, three touchdown passes, including a long of 40 yards, and a 137.7 passer rating. But DeVito also absorbed nine sacks. Now, before anybody goes and starts screaming, offensive line again. Yes, offensive line was part of the problem. Yes, Saquon Barkley whiffed on a on a pass pro uh, in which I think he was supposed to chip, and he didn't. But there were a few uh, of those sacks that I think you can lay on the feet of, of uh, Tommy DeVito for holding the ball a little too long um, and not getting rid of it. But that said, you know, you look at Tommy DeVito's performance in this game, and quite frankly, you know, I had wondered if the game was still too fast for him, and I thought it started out fast for him, and then it started to slow down, and I got to tip my hat to the kid, because the grit that he showed, I mean, he was under duress for basically most of the game, again, whether that was the fault of his own line or his own fault, 
And you know what? Not a single turnover, not an interception, not a fumble. The Giants had zero turnovers, all right? When you have zero turnovers and your opponent has, I think the, the commanders had something like six, when they had that many, you should win that game. And sure enough, the Giants getting uh, of those six turnovers, the six takeaways, which, by the way, coming into this game, I think the Giants had 10 takeaways. So in the first half alone, I think they had five, which you know was half of what they did all season long, and then the one extra for good measure. So that was kind of cool. But uh, the Giants, you know, converting those takeaways, there were um, they got, I think, 17 points, 17 out of their 31 points off of Washington mistakes. So not too bad there. Not too bad there. Um, the game plan, I thought, was pretty solid. I thought this was one of the more creative game plans we've seen from the coaching staff, both sides of the ball, really. Mike Kafka and, and the offense and Brian Dable, you know, whatever involvement he had. And, of course, Wink Martindale going after Sam Howell uh, the way he did, which, you know, makes you wonder why other teams, I guess, didn't really go after Sam Howell as much as the Giants did. Because, obviously, the key to upsetting the kid is to, to get after him. And Wink Martindale sure did bring the heat. So Sam Howell finished um, 31 of 45, 255 yards, four sacks, one touchdown, three interceptions. Right? Excellent, excellent job by the Giants. Now, it wasn't perfect. You know, no game ever really is, but a lot to like about this performance by the Giants. And I know some of you are going to say, well, it came against Washington. Big deal. All right. You know, look, just as the Eagles have owned the, the Giants and the Cowboys have owned the Giants, the Giants have owned Washington. Let's call it for what it is. But let's look at some other numbers real quick that I found kind of interesting. And this is kind of a trend. This, this number I'm going to give you has kind of been a trend. But the Giants' time of possession in this game was only 25 minutes and nine seconds. But yet they scored and they were more efficient. Now, what's kind of interesting is that in every game, the Giants have led in the time of possession. You would think they would, would have won or at least been more competitive. Hasn't been the case. So that was certainly a positive to see the Giants do more with uh, less time on their side. So that was certainly um, something I like to see. The Giants, let's see, in the red zone, they were one of two. You'd like to see that a little bit better, obviously. Um, they were five of 14 on third down. That continues to be a problem for the offense, although uh, Washington was not much better. They were five of 13. Penalties. Let's look at penalties. Uh, the Giants, only three penalties, 56 yards. Washington, zero penalties. And by the way, that uh, fight at the end of the, I think it was a, when Washington had scored their first touchdown, those penalties offset. So they are, they're not recorded. No holding penalties, interestingly, in this game. Kudos to Carl Banks for pointing that out, by the way. I don't think there's ever been a game that I've gone through that I haven't seen at least one holding penalty call. But this game didn't have it. So uh, that was kind of, you know, a, a special thing. I mean, who thought? Who would have thought it? No um, holding penalties and zero rushing yardage from the Giants for the first three quarters of the game. Um, all right. The leading tackler for the Giants, again, Bobby Okereke. But Kayvon Thibodeau, we're going to talk about him in the next segment. Mr. Tibbs had himself a game. All right. So. That being said, folks, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I do have some additional notables for you from this game that I want to talk about. So please don't go anywhere. Hey, Giant fans. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available, right? So that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. I've used LinkedIn Jobs myself to find aspiring writers and editors for Giants Country, the site that I run over on SI's Fan Nation. And the process is not only super easy, but a big time saver. Simply add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring and then sit back as simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on the candidates with just the right skills and experience so that you can quickly prioritize whom you like to interview and hire. 
So don't spend time sorting through endless resumes and dead end leads. Put LinkedIn jobs to work for you today for free by visiting linkedin.com slash locked on NFL terms and conditions apply. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Locked on Giants podcast. I'm your host, Patricia Trena, and we're talking about a Giants win. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Um, Now, believe it or not, there were people in my timeline that weren't happy with the win. I'm going to talk about that in the next segment, and I'm going to try and bring some perspective to that. But let's get back to some of the notables here um, in this Giants win. I mentioned Tommy DeVito and the great job he did with the ball security, which was a huge, huge issue. But you know what? Considering that, you know, the first time I saw Tommy DeVito in a Giants uniform, I wasn't ultra impressed with him. I got to give him a lot of credit. He has really grown in this role. Now, I don't think that he's necessarily a QB1 or he solves the Giants quarterback position issue. But if you're thinking it down the line with him, Maybe he's showing just enough by the end, by the time, you know, this run of his is over that maybe he could be a viable backup to whoever is the starter next year. So that's why I'm, I'm kind of glad to see Tommy DeVito round into shape, you know, um, Tyrod Taylor, who's on IR, he's going to be a free agent after this year. Um, not going to be back probably. So, you know, the giants getting an opportunity to see what they have in DeVito And he's taken a beating. What else is new? All the quarterbacks this year for the Giants have taken a beating. But three touchdown passes. And I think uh, I saw a stat where he's had the most touchdown passes in his first two starts in the NFL since 1950. And that would be amongst, when I say the most, I mean the most amongst quarterbacks. And I think it was Giants quarterbacks in their first two starts since 1950. So not too bad for the for the Jersey porn DeVito. Good for him. Let's talk about Kayvon Thibodeau. I mentioned him at the end of last segment. Thibodeau had two sacks in this game. He is now officially the first defender in a Wink Martindale coordinated defense to score double digit sacks. All right. He is also the first Giants defender with double digit sacks since Leonard Williams did it in 2020. And the first outside linebacker with double-digit sacks since Marcus Golden had 10 in 2019. So remember when everybody, well, not everybody, but remember when there were certain people that were screaming that Kayvon Thibodeau was a bus, he wasn't an impact player, he was no good, he was this, he was that? Where are they now? Thibodeau is playing lights out. You know, you could see the confidence, you could see the swagger, you could just see the impact he can make on the game. And you know what? He's kind of doing it, despite the fact that, you know, on the other side, Aziz Ojulari, who played in this game, has kind of been invisible. So whether he's doing it by smoke and mirrors or what have you, Thibodeau's getting it done for the Giants on defense. Right now, he and Dexter Lawrence are probably the two best players on that defense as of right now, the two best regular players. And, you know, you could throw Bobby Okereke in there. I don't want to this Bobby Okereke. He's playing well too. But um, Thibodeau and, and Lawrence, you know, in terms of, I guess, you know, the pass rush and impacting the quarterback, give it to those guys. Those guys are really getting it down. Um, all right. What else can I tell you about the Giants? The I mentioned the um, coaching staff in the previous segment. Now, this is kind of interesting because coming into this game, there were starting to be grumbles about, oh, my God, is Brian Dable losing the locker room? You know, players were talking out, you know, expressing frustration with how things were going. The demeanor in the locker room, you know, when I was in the locker room last week, it was as dead as a doornail. I mean, normally in in a given day in the locker room, you see players playing ping pong, you see them you know, hanging out with each other, studying, whatever. It was not like that last week. So you kind of almost got the impression that, oh my gosh, what's going on here? Are they just, you know, so mentally beaten that, you know, we're going to start seeing guys make business decisions or what's going to happen here? Well, folks, I don't think we saw very many people, if any, in this game, making any business decisions. And in retrospect, maybe that silence or maybe the fact that these guys were, 
you know, not as accessible as they've been all season long. Maybe that was just them getting back down to business and say, okay, enough of all the, you know, the uh, distractions. We're going to settle in and we are going to buckle down and do what we can to win some games this season before it closes out. So they did just that. Um, and we have a win to talk about, which, you know, I didn't honestly think we would have another win this season to talk about. I mean, although some of you did tell me, you know, when I posted my prediction, you were like, Pat, if they're going to beat anybody, it's going to be Washington. Well, you were right. I was wrong. I picked Washington to win. Although I think I had a close game. Um, I don't remember the score I, I picked, but I think it was kind of close what I picked. But, um, but yeah, the Giants, you know, everybody said embrace the tank. The Giants are tanking. You know, the lineup that they have out on the field is, a, is an automatic tank. Mm -mm. That T word isn't in the team's vocabulary. So, you know, for those of you who were kind of hoping for losses the rest of the way, it ain't happening. I told you it wasn't going to happen, and it's just not happening. This Giants team, you know, they're playing for pride. They're playing for their jobs. They're playing for the opportunity that's before them. And the opportunity that's before them, if you look at the guys that were on the field, most of the guys that were on the field, you had a lot of young players out there who are playing for jobs next year. And I know next year is next year. Worry about uh, you know today, this week, or whatever. But when the season is lost and – Let's not kid ourselves. The win against the commanders didn't save the season. The season is done, you know, as far as the Giants' hopes of a playoff berth, even though they're still mathematically alive. It's very, very, you know, they're a long shot. But that said, you have a lot of young players playing for their job next year. And that could be a good thing. And here's why that's a good thing, folks, because it gives the coaching staff, gives Brian Dable and Joe Shane an opportunity to see with some of these guys, like a Javarius Owens, who was active today, you know, a DJ Davidson who continues to get snaps, you know, um, the young Dane Belton, um, Aziz Ojulari, like I mentioned, it gives them an opportunity to say, okay, are these guys going to be part of our future moving forward? Or do we have to maybe look to replace them at their respective roles? So very important, you know, games here. You know, it's almost like a preseason game, but it's being, you know, the, the results obviously count and it's, you know, obviously there's game planning and assignments and all that stuff, but it's an opportunity to kind of get a jump on next year without, you know, really officially getting a jump on next year, if you know what I mean. All right. Coming up next, some of you after the game wrote to me on social media expressing disappointment that the Giants won. I'll tell you why that was, and I'll tell you why you really need to dial it back and take a deep breath about this. That's coming up after this. Hey, Giant fans, you know, it never fails. You're watching a game, and then you suddenly get a rumble in your stomach. But with so few precious minutes in between plays and quarters, often there's not enough time to run to the fridge and heat something up to munch on. So now you don't have to, thanks to DoorDash. Whatever it is you're craving, pizza, wings, tacos, burgers, you name it, and DoorDash can bring it to you so that you don't have to miss a second of your favorite programming. You know, for years, I've trusted DoorDash to deliver freshly made meals from my favorite restaurants, whether I'm at home or on the road, and they've never let me down. And lately, I've also gone to DoorDash when I've needed incidentals from drug stores or convenience stores or even grocery stores. DoorDash has allowed me to support my favorite small business stores like Food Architects and more. And you know what? You'll get what you ordered or they will make it right. And you can save on all your deliveries with a monthly Dash Pass membership that more than pays for itself after just a couple of deliveries. There's never been a better time than now to join DoorDash. As for a limited time, you can get 50% off your first DoorDash order up to $10 when you spend $15 or more on that first order. Download the DoorDash app today. Enter the promo code LOCKED23 at checkout and start saving. Offer subject to change. Terms apply. Hey, Giant fans. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day 
with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every single league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe for the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. All right, Giant fans, welcome back to the Locked On Giants podcast. I'm your host, Patricia Trena. We are talking about a win, so I'm smiling because, look, when a win happens, my job gets so much easier because I don't have to go through all the time and look at um, what went wrong and talk about it. Because, look, there's only so many ways you can say that, you know, the team is understaffed or the team's not good or whatnot. So it's so nice to have something positive to talk about. And uh, that's what we're doing here on the Lock on Giants podcast. But, you know, with the win, believe it or not, there were some people that wrote to me on social media and said, dang, damn it, what's wrong with the Giants? And I'm like, what are you talking about? Well, apparently the Giants who came into this game were slated to draft number two overall. They dropped to number five. And that has upset a few people who want the team to tank so that they can get one of the new one of the two quarterbacks widely regarded, you know, as as uh, the top picks in the draft. Uh, Caleb Williams and uh, Drake May, I believe, is the other one. All right, guys, here's for those of you who feel this way. Here's why I think you need to kind of take a deep breath and look at things a little bit differently. Just because you have a top pick in the first five rounds or the first five slots, rather, in the first round doesn't mean anything. All right. It's there's no guarantee that the first five players to come off the board are going to be superstars. Now, the odds are certainly in their favor, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work for you. Not if you don't do your homework, not if you don't assess the right personality for your team, the right skill set for what your coaches want to do. You know, so really, you know, yes, it's nice to have a pick in the first, you know, five slots into the draft, but it doesn't mean anything. And for proof of that, I went back and I looked at the Giants draft history in the first round. Some guys said they took within the top 10. Now, you would think top 10, they would get a stud. Mm -mm, hasn't always been the case. All right. Eli Apple was the 10th overall pick in 2016. We all know how that worked out, right? Eric Flowers was the ninth overall pick in 2015. Hey, Flowers went on to become a great guard, just not with the Giants because the Giants tried to shoehorn him into the tackle spot for which he was not really a fit. And you can also make the case or an argument to say that as of right now, Evan Neal, who was the, who was the seventh overall pick, has not quite developed the way maybe everybody thought he would in his second year. So, you know, you look at other teams. I think Justin Fields for the Bears is still struggling. Um, Baker Mayfield, when he was drafted by the Browns, I think he was, was, if I'm not mistaken, I think he was the first overall pick and he's now become a journeyman, right? So having a top pick in the, in like the top 10 or even the top five doesn't mean anything. You have to have faith in your GM and your scouts and your front office that whoever they pick and wherever they pick in the draft, that person is going to be a star for you, right? We've seen instances. I mean, you know, everybody's saying, oh, first round pick, they got to go quarterback. Okay. I don't dispute that they probably need another quarterback given Daniel Jones's injury history. But where was Jalen Hurts drafted? I don't believe it was first round. I think he was second round. Dak Prescott, where was he drafted? Fourth round, if I'm not mistaken. Sam Howell, fifth round pick. All right. So the point is, is yeah, it would be great to find the next Eli Manning. It would be great to find, you know, the next Phil Sims, both of whom were first round picks. But it doesn't mean that, you know, it's going to happen. You can luck out with a, a second round pick like a Jalen Hurts or a sixth round pick like a, a Tom Brady. 
you know, it's, it's, it's a gamble. I'm not going to lie, but if you do your homework, it can happen. So those of you who are like saying, oh, the giant's got a tank or embrace the tank. This is why I will never embrace the tank. You know, as a competitor, you just don't do that. I'd rather see the team play with pride. I'd rather see, you know, the young players step up and fight for jobs and fight for their statuses. And, you know, a few weeks ago, or maybe it was a couple of weeks ago, somebody asked me, give me a reason to keep watching this giant team, despite the fact that their season's over. There's your reason, folks. Watch for the future, because that's all we've got right now. And I know, you know, it stinks come playoff time. You know, we'd rather be in the playoffs and everything. I get it. But we're watching for the future, as is the front office, as is the coaching staff. And that, to me, is not too bad. I, I think it's interesting, quite honestly. I think it's interesting because then you can kind of guess how they're going to fill out the rest of the roster with where they're lacking. So don't, you know, I don't embrace the tank at all. All right, Giant fans, thank you so much for tuning into the Locked on Giants podcast today. It was so good talking about a win instead of having to have a long laundry list of why they lost and how bad they look and everything like that. And again, the game wasn't perfect, but it was much, much better than what we had seen. There's a lot of film there that they can learn from and hopefully they will learn from. So on that note, we will call it a show. Thank you for tuning in, making us your first listener today. Or if you watch on YouTube, your first watch of the day, I'll be back with all new episodes every day this week. Tune in to see what kind of surprises I have for you. All right. We'll see you soon, Giant fans. Take care.